my pleasure to introduce Devrin Larson today as our guest speaker. Devrin grew up in Ephraim, Utah, and graduated from Snow College, so he is a Badger. He's been married to his wife, Cherish, for over 33 years. They have six children and eight grandchildren. Shortly after college, Devrin bought his first franchise at the age of 23, not much older than many of you are now. Since then, he has started, built, sold, and founded six other companies. He has also spent over 12 years as a business coach, consultant, and account executive. This has allowed him to be to talk to and learn mission. from many other highly successful entrepreneurs. Currently, Devron owns and manages Power Plus Cleaning and Restoration, as well as three other companies that provide service from Salt Lake to Las Vegas. With over 33 years of business experience, Devron has been through all the ups and downs of business and enjoys sharing his knowledge with those looking to become future entrepreneurs. Devron enjoys traveling, camping, fishing, outdoors, spending time with his family, cooking, and is a heavy smoker. So please welcome Devron Larson. Okay, heavy smoker. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I don't need to send the mic. Is that you guys can hear me, right? Okay. Again, thanks, Russ. I appreciate Thanks, Sam, for letting me come. Uh, again, my name is Devron. For those in the back can't maybe see, yes, I am standing. So um, that uh, just just so you know. Um, as as Russ mentioned, just um, let's get the elephant out of the room right now. Um, I am a heavy smoker, um, and I am a bishop in one of the YSA wards down here. So how does that work, right? Um, I started smoking about uh, about four years ago, and it's, it's highly addictive, um, so be careful, and it's ridiculously expensive. Right now, um, ribs are highly expensive, briskets even more so. Um, so if you're going to get into smoking, uh, just know that it is addictive, but it is very good. Some of you in here have had that, have, have tasted the benefit of it. Yeah, yeah. The whole family. So I know uh, Joey and Sam, I don't know if Cole has or not yet taken advantage of it, but um, you know, if you, if you uh, like smoking, come on up to my house. We'll have a good time. Okay. Um, so just real quick, uh, you know, I, I start out kind of just telling the story so people understand, um, you know, what, what, what experience we're drawing from. Um, uh, I know, I know a guy that's a professor at BYU and he teaches marketing at, uh, at BYU, business marketing. I said, oh, cool. I said, what business have you owned? He goes, oh, I've never owned a business. And I said, well, what do you teach? He goes, well, I teach how to market business. I said, I know, but how do you, what do you teach? And he says, well, just what they tell me. And I'm like, okay. So I don't really think that's, Anyway, that didn't click very well with me, put it that way. So I'm going to just share my story so that you have an understanding that, hey, um, that what I'm going to tell you and teach about comes from real life, true experience, um, not just stuff that I've read or made up. Um, so as Russ mentioned, I grew up here in Ephraim, graduated from Manti High School. Any other Templars? Yeah, there we go. Go Templars, okay? Um, served a mission, LES mission in Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, it is a little bit backward. It is a little bit, uh, you know, whatever. Um, I call it the only foreign mission in America. And so, um, but uh, served there from 88 to 90. Came back here, started snow, met my wife. We got married in 91 and uh, graduated from Snow College in 1992. Uh, we went up to the University of Utah where I majored in chemistry. Go Cougars. Um, and, wait, yeah. Uh, yeah, go Cougars still. No, I'm... Uh, anyway, as I majored in chemistry, and it was during my, I think it was in my fourth year, I was in this lab class, right? And who, who likes labs? That's what I thought. Okay. Um, and I was doing this really boring stuff, and I'm like, you know, this just, I, I just don't see myself doing this. I grew up here in Ephraim. We have a farm out here just north of town. So I was kind of really into, like, I used to work with my hands and outdoors, kind of more manual labor. Uh, Cole knows what I'm talking about. He's a, uh, he's a farm boy too. Um, and, and, uh, I just like, I just didn't quite see myself. My dad was an entrepreneur. 
Uh, he owned a farm. He owned some apartments over here. Uh, we owned the bowling alley when I was growing up. So if you've been to the bowling alley, we owned that a long time ago. So I was one of those guys that had, I was really popular because everybody wanted to go out and eat and bowl for free, but I didn't really have any friends, you know? So um, that was me. That was, that was, that was me. But anyway, um, so I, during this class, this lab, I'm like, you know, I just, just don't know if I can see myself doing this for life. So at the time I was to put myself through school, I was running a chem dry carpet cleaning franchise for my cousin. And uh, I come home and told my wife, like, look, I'm done. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want my own business. That's what I really want to do. And we had the opportunity to buy that franchise when I was 23. So we went and got a loan for about 40,000 bucks and bought this franchise. I was scared to death. Didn't, didn't know if, you know, uh, what if, if make it or not. And we, uh, we took off and we made it go. Um, about uh, 1997, I sold that franchise and I invested that money with uh, my, the same cousin of mine that I bought the franchise from. We started a sales and marketing company and uh, we went really, really good. We got up to where we we're doing like $200,000 a week in sales. That was our best week and doing really well. And come to find out, we had another partner that I didn't know too good. This will be a life lesson. Uh, and he was supposed to do all the fulfillment. He was supposed to be, you know, sending out the product and doing the fulfillment. And lo and behold, he wasn't doing it. And we literally, and it kind of caught up to us. And, and before we knew what was happening, it just, it crumbled and we couldn't, we couldn't recover. And we lost it all. Um, we literally lost everything. We lost a home. We lost cars. We lost everything. And at this point in time now, I was 30 years old. I had a wife. I had three kids. And um, I, I, I basically say I was homeless. Okay. We moved in with my in-laws for a couple months to get my feet back on the ground. And I started another carpet cleaning business here in San Pete at that time. This was 1997. And um, I got that up and going and then sold it to my brother-in-law, gave us a little bit of money, and we actually moved up to Pleasant Grove. We lived there for about 12 years. I worked for a company called PMI, um, where they did like online consulting and coaching. Um, and um, I was able to work with about four or 5,000 different people, uh, kind of teaching and training them how to start business, online marketing, things like that, right? And that was uh, started in 1999. And I was there for about 12 years. And, um, and it was great. Uh, I, I love that experience. We had, uh, I, I kind of worked my way up in that company and I was, a became an account executive where I would go throughout the country and I would try to get new accounts. And we traveled there. I went from, I mean, we went in Florida to the Carolinas, to New York, to Philly, all across the East coast, wherever. I mean, Vegas. And here's a little, uh, learning experience. Uh, I, I made the mistake of taking my wife to Vegas with me on one of these business trips. Right. And, uh, they, they say what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Right. Okay. Well, that's not always true because we came home with a baby. And, um, so we found out that it doesn't always stay in Vegas. Sometimes it, it comes home with you for life. Right. So, um, my wife uh, got pregnant. So I didn't take her on any more business trips. Um, so um, this was uh, about in 2011. And, and for those of you, you might be too young to remember, but in 2008, they, what they, they call the Great Recession started. Um, and that's where the financial sector, the basically real estate bubble collapsed and business were really struggling. Lots of people lost money. And I could see the handwriting on the wall that this company I was working for, they were, the, the, the ship was sinking and it was going down pretty quick. And so I thought, well, I got to have a plan B ready. What do I, what do I want to do? And I said, well, I want to go back into business. And what do I know? Well, I knew carpet cleaning really, really well. Um, been doing that for, for a long time. So uh, I looked on KS at one time and found this equipment, this van and with all the equipment that I needed. And it was, he had it listed for $60,000. So I called him up. I skipped work one day, drove to Fillmore where the van was at and went and looked. I'm like, yep, this is exactly what I want. This is it. This is the equipment, the van, the package, whatever. And, um, and so I saw, I, I gave the guy a down payment of like 10 grand. And he's like, I said, Hey, you know, how much do you want? He goes, I want 60,000. I said, okay, I'll give you 50. Um, he's like, okay, I'll take it. So I gave him $10,000, told him I'd come back next Saturday and pick it up. Um, so on Friday night, I told my wife, I said, hey, do you want to go for a ride with me tomorrow? And she goes, yeah, where are we going? I said, to Fillmore. She goes, what's in Fillmore? And I said, well, I bought a carpet cleaning van. And she goes, you did what? 
I said, yeah, I, I bought a carpet cleaning van. She goes, well, how much was it? And I said, 50,000. <laughs> and my wife is amazing. Guys, don't do that to your wives. Don't be that kind of a person. But anyway, she was amazing. She's like, okay, why and whatever. She knows I'm crazy. And so we went there and, and bought this van. And that's when I told her about my current job. And like, it's, we need a plan B and we need it really, really fast. And that's how I broke the news to her. So she was a little bit shocked and she's like, okay, here we go. But my wife is amazing. She was super supportive. So uh, six months later, my prediction came true. The company basically went out of business and, and we said, hey, let's go ahead and start. So I uh, bought the van I, and then I approached my brother-in-law who I'd sold my business to a, a decade before and said, hey, let's start a business together. And um, he had been working that business for 10 years here in Sam Pete. And, um, and I said, hey, let's start a business together. And so this is what I call our zero to a million dollar story, okay? Um, whoops, wrong way. So um, when we first started, my partner literally laughed at me, okay? Because he'd owned this business for 10 years. And he was, the most he'd ever done in a year was $25,000 in revenue. Okay, in a year after owning it for 10 years. And I said to him, I said, um, I, I told him, I said, hey, I think we could build this up to a million dollars. And he literally laughed at me like, <laughs> like, yeah, whatever. And I said, no, like, I really believe we can. I think we can do that in five years. And he says, well, okay, let's get going. And we didn't do a million dollars in five years. We actually did it in four. Okay. And this is what we started with. Okay. That was Power Plus when we very first started, okay? Four years later, this is our company now, okay? We actually have an office here in San Pete. We have an office in Orem. Uh, we opened up an office in St. George in, in January of 2020. Great timing um, due to COVID, that one didn't work out. But um, so um, we've done really well. And um, we um, have had some ups and downs. With it, uh, when I left that company, I was making equivalent to probably two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand dollars in today's dollars back then. Um, and our first year at Power Plus, we went from that level to about thirty-eight thousand dollars. Now, that sounds like a lot when you're like, if you guys had thirty-eight thousand dollars right now, you guys would be like jumping for joy. But when you have a wife and six kids, that's not very much money. Okay, so those first couple years were a little bit lean, and that's part of being an entrepreneur. Something we'll talk about here in a minute. Okay, one of the lessons that you'll learn if you want to be an entrepreneur. Okay, there are some lessons that you'll need to learn, and that's one of them. Is hey, there is some some sacrifice. Um, that first year, um, Christmas was pretty lean. As a matter of fact, that Thanksgiving, uh, the night uh, before Thanksgiving, we um, they turned our power off. And I don't know why, because we were only four months behind on the payment and, and they turned our power off like cheese, you know, and because um, we're like, well, we can buy food or we can pay that. And so we just kind of got behind and they turned our power off. And so we're like, OK, um, my wife's like, well, let's get out the flashlight. I mean, we we just may do. Well, it got even funner because two days before Christmas, we lived kind of up in the hills. Some of you know where I live. And we were run off of propane. And we ran out of propane. So it was winter. We had no heat. And so we just put on extra sweatshirts and wrapped up in blankets. And that's how we had Christmas until we could afford a little bit more propane. So, you know, there's some ups and downs of business, okay? Um, especially when you're first starting. That's part of being an entrepreneur. You got to understand that, okay? So fast forward to today, though. And uh, Power Plus has expanded from, from Sam Pete, just Sam Pete. Now we do um, service all the Wasatch Front um, down through, you know, these small counties, St. George and even into Vegas. Um, we're actually going there in a couple of weeks and we have uh, some big accounts down there. Um, we also own, uh, um, from that, we've also expanded some other things. We actually own a custom cabinet and molding shop. Um, we own a, we call Goat Lawn and Pest Control Company. Uh, we have an online store where we sell our product online. It's called Carpet Smart. And we actually have a new brand that we're, we're launching right now called Urine Exterminator. And all total revenue-wise, we're about $3 million a year, okay? Um, and so, you know, that sounds all really cool, but there's a lot of experience, a lot of things that we've learned from that. And so 
being in entrepreneurship, I don't know how many of you are like taking this class because like, hey, I just got to get some, you know, elective class and, you know, I'm going to go off and do my way. And that's great. Others of you who are maybe seriously thinking about entrepreneurship. So let's talk about maybe some of the pros and cons of being an entrepreneur. Um, and just kind of real briefly, um, some of the pros are uh, you literally have unlimited potential. That doesn't mean you'll make unlimited money, but your potential is there. Okay. One of the things that always worried me about working for that other company was that I was not in control of it, right? At any given time, if I didn't do my job well or whatever, I could be let go, okay? Um, so um, I didn't really like that. So you have unlimited potential in both the income and the security of that job, okay? The second thing is um, you can create freedom of time. Now, as you get older, when you, um, I, I know it's hard to believe, but one day you'll be an old guy like me, okay? You're, you'll realize that your, your priorities switch pretty quickly, okay? Right now, it's all about, hey, let's make some money, go have some fun, go on some dates, okay? Buy a new car, get a house. So a lot of it's money motivated right now. How many of you are, how many of you are like pretty money motivated right now as an entrepreneur, okay? Yeah, great, and you should be, right? But... Pretty soon it'll switch and it'll go from money being the thing you're most after to time, okay? Time will be your most valuable commodity. And that's one thing I love about business is that you have a lot of flexibility. Um, um, that's why I'm able to be here today. And it's also very rewarding. Some of the cons of it, okay? Um, you're gonna risk both time and money, all right? That's one thing you will risk as being an entrepreneur, okay? And I will tell you this right now, if you're not comfortable with those two things, you probably better look for something else, okay? If you're not willing to risk some time and money, okay? Um, second thing is, is um, you're never off the clock. How many of you guys have a job right now? Raise your hand, okay? How many of you love it when your shift is over and you get a clock out and go home, okay? <laughs> Pretty nice, right? Well, that doesn't happen a lot when you're a business owner. The clock never stops, all right? I'm always thinking about it. I'm always talking about I'm, I'm I'm working at home a lot sometimes I'll work until one or two in the morning sometimes I'll uh, you know work in, in in the day but that's one thing is the clock you, you never really clock out and the last one is it can be stressful at times okay when you're first starting and your power gets shut off it a little stressful okay but overall I think the rewards are highly highly outweigh the, the cons at least for me um, so that's kind of my story. So I want to talk about what are some of the, the lessons that um, uh, I have learned from being an entrepreneur, all right? And, and as you go on your journey, all right, or if you're thinking about going down this journey, these are some things I would recommend that you talk, that you really think strongly about, okay? Um, one is I get, a, I get asked a lot, okay? Um, I get asked quite a bit about, hey, how do we get started? What should I do? Or how do I come up with an idea, okay? Um, one thing that I hear a lot, and I don't really agree with this, okay, is that people say, well, find something you're passionate about and then do that. How many of you heard that before, okay? And here's what I'm gonna tell you. If you can find something that you are just truly passionate about and you wanna make that your business or your career, your, your venture, great, go ahead and do it, okay? How many of you have thought about having a business of your own? How many of you struggle with the idea? Okay, like what am I gonna do? Well, let me give you a little bit different perspective, okay? For me, I didn't go to college, I didn't grow up thinking, you know what, I wanna be a carpet cleaner. Anybody in here have that goal? Hmm, weird, okay? Um, I didn't either. But as an entrepreneur, okay, here's, here's what you got to remember. You're going to go through your life. You're going to go be going down this path, okay? You don't get to choose when opportunities come your way. You don't get to choose it. They come when they come. Now, you can create them sometimes, but most of the time, opportunities will come when they come. What your job is to do is to choose whether you want to do that or not, okay? And if you're ready to do that or not right? And I would say this, I'm not really passionate, believe it or not, about carpet cleaning. What I am passionate about 
is building a successful business, okay? So I would dare, I would dare tell you this. Um, if you want to be a super successful, um, have a sheep ranch, right? Cole, be passionate about building that business. Not, maybe you don't even like sheep anymore, okay? You grew up with them forever, okay? But, um, you know, if that's what you're going to do, be passionate about building that business, okay? I uh, had a good talk with Sam the other day, right? And, you know, he's, he wants to go into finance. Great. Be passionate about that business if that's what you want to do, okay? But be more passionate about being creating success and not just always, hey, something I wake up every day and I'm just filled with blissful joy to do this because that's not always the case, okay? Um, next thing is, you know, um, that being said, get started, okay? Um, if you really want to do something, get started. Action creates momentum, okay? And momentum creates passion, really does, all right? So one of the biggest things, I had a, I had a, a guy that I coached football with when I was younger, and he came up to me and says, he says, I've got an idea that I know is going to make me a multimillionaire. I'm like, he goes, I'm like, wow, really? He goes, oh, yeah, guaranteed. I said, well, why are you doing it? Oh, no, I, no, I said, no, oh, yeah, I said, I said, he goes, why aren't you? I said, why aren't you doing it? He goes, well, I'm afraid I'll fail. And I said, wait, you just told me, you know, what's going to make you money. He goes, and he goes, yeah, but I'm afraid it will, it'll fail. And I said, well, it's already failing. You're not doing it. Why not give it a try? And he, he, he says, well, I'm just afraid. I said, well, what is it? He goes, I'm not telling you because I know you'll go do it. I said, well, if, if you know it's going to make you a millionaire, I absolutely will do it. But get started. Do something. Okay? Um, and we'll talk about that here in just a second. What, what are some things you can do? What are things you can do right now? Okay? You're in college. You're stressed out. You've, you've, you, know, you probably don't have a ton of money. You're taking classes. You may have a job. What are some things you can do right now to start becoming an entrepreneur? Okay? Number one is you need the right mindset. Okay? You will create, I promise you, write this one down. You will create wealth here long, long before you create it here. Okay? You will create wealth here long before you create it here. Okay? So there are things you can do right now, even though you might be broke, starving students, to start creating that wealth. Number one. Okay, is start reading. Get off of the internet, get off of social media, get off of Netflix and start reading. If you want to, um, if you want to be successful, start reading. I tell people, and I've, I've taught entrepreneurship classes before in to high schools and to other people, and I will tell you this, I just want to tell people, if you want to be successful in business, you have got to be educated. Okay, now be careful what you heard. I didn't say you needed a college degree. I said you needed to be educated. Okay, there are different ways to be educated. Okay, um, and that that means, um, but but start reading. Start reading success books. Start reading marketing books. Start learning. I mean, there's YouTube classes now. How to do all kinds of things in business, in marketing, in sales, in product promotion, web design, I mean, whatever. Start educating yourself. And I'm not saying don't go to college, okay? It, 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 it's not the path that I completely chose, but I'm not, I'm not saying don't get educate, an education. But if that's not your path, you need to be educated in business, okay? Start reading. This is crazy, but if you want to be really successful, okay? I heard a guy the other day, I was listening to a podcast the other day, he said, and I, this blew me away. He said he reads over a hundred books a year. I haven't read a hundred books in my life. Okay. He reads, a, I know. Wow. Yeah. Crazy, huh? And this guy's brilliant and he's a multimillionaire now. Okay. So I'm like, hmm, maybe he knows something I don't know. Okay. Um, start, uh, but, but again, start educating, so start taking some action. Um, number two, learn what business you're in. I'm going to show you a video here. How do I do that, Russ? I'm going to show you a video here. 
You need to learn what business you're in. This is a good video. How many of you guys seen the movie The Founder? Anybody? The story of the McDonald's story? Okay. This is a, this is a clip from it. How many of you know that McDonald's is one of the largest landowners any corporation in America? Okay. That's where their money comes from. It's not from flipping burgers. They are one of the largest land lease owners in the world. Okay. And this guy, his last name was Sonnenberg. He, he taught uh, Ray Kroc, the founder of McDonald's, that principle. And from then on, that's when McDonald's exploded throughout the world, when they realized what business they were in. When I started my company um, with my partner, the one that laughed at me, um, I asked him this question. I said, what business are we starting? Okay, I'm going to ask you the same question. What business do I, what business am I in? Go ahead, answer. I'll give you a hint. It's not carpet cleaning. Interesting, huh? Business management. Sorry? Yeah. Business management. Good. That's good. Part of it. Okay. It's not the exact answer I'm looking for, but that's good. That's definitely a part of it. What business am I in? Someone be daring. Let's go. Real estate. Real estate. Uh, I wish I was, but that's not this one. Okay. Sorry? Customer service. Huh? Um, customer service. That's a huge part of it, but that's still not the business I'm in. I asked my partner the same thing. Very good. Bingo. Okay. I don't own a carpet cleaning business. I own a marketing business. Okay. And that's what I told my partner. I said, we're, we're going to start a business. He goes, okay. I said, what business are we starting? He goes, carpet cleaning. I said, no. Customer service. No. Um, uh, whatever, whatever. No, no, no. I said, we are a marketing company first. Okay. What we market is carpet cleaning. Does that make sense? And if you will switch your mind, okay, because there's a lot of carpet cleaners out there who start a carpet cleaning business. What do they do? They buy a truck. They learn how to clean carpet. They go get some customers. They clean some carpet. They make some money and they go home. And then the next day they get up, clean some carpets, make some money and go home. Okay. I did not want to do that. I wanted to build a business that allowed me to not get up and clean carpet every day and then go home. Okay. So if you want to be a carpet cleaner, great, do that. If you want to build a business, think of it as a marketing or a sales business. Okay. Because every product and service needs to be bought and sold and marketed or you don't have a business. Right. Um, and so that's, again, that's the one key thing is know what business that you're in. Okay. One thing I'm going to recommend everybody, if you're serious about being an entrepreneur, learn to sell. Okay. Learn to sell, write that one down. That is probably one of the biggest things you can start doing that right now. Learn to sell, learn to sell, present, learn to communicate, learn to, um, how to present, learn how to write ad copy, learn how to, um, do a presentation, okay? Learn a, uh, what do you call an elevator pitch, all right? Um, Joey, if, if, you're, if somebody comes up to you and said, hey, Joey, what do you do for a living? You should have a, in the time it takes to get an elevator, go to the third floor and get off. They call it an elevator pitch, so it's about 10 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds. Tell me what you do, all right? Learn to sell. And even if you don't start a business, Learn to sell, people. I can't tell you how beneficial that is in life, in any job, okay? Um, number three, find partners you can trust, not just people who will invest money. We literally lost everything because we had an untrustworthy partner that we didn't know about, okay? My partners now, I literally would trust them with my life, my future, my money, whatever, okay? And then don't... Get just a partner who will give you money. You can find money lots of places. If you're going to partner with somebody, find a partner that will help you build your business, not just give you money. 
There's a lot of people that are capital, venture capitalists and things like that. They'll say, hey, I'll give you, you know, $100,000 for 20% of your business. If they're not helping you build it daily or involved in some level, find somebody else or at least look for somebody else. Okay, because when they're financially invested and they're with you, I promise you it'll go a lot faster. Number four, build your network. That's something you guys can start right now as well. Start building a network. Do you know why? Who goes to Harvard? Typically, who, what, kids, what kind of kids go to Harvard? Rich kids, right? Rich kids. Okay. Do you know that a Harvard education, do you, well, let me ask you this. Do you believe that what they teach at Harvard is a lot, let's, let's take a calculus class, okay? Math class. Chemistry class. Do you think that the math they teach at Harvard is different than the math they teach here at Snow College? Math is math, right? So why is a Harvard education so valuable? Why are so many Harvard-educated people wildly successful? So what? Networking Network. Because when you graduate from Harvard, you get plugged into their alumni system. And when you're plugged into the alumni system, they have millions of wildly successful, extremely wealthy people that they now get to be part of their alumni group and they network with. That's why so many, that's why the value of a Harvard education is not the classes that you learn, it's the network that you get to be a part of when you're done. Okay? So if you have a chance to start networking right now, you can do that. Okay? With other successful people with business-minded people. If you can go to lectures, if you can go to networking events, things like that, start building your network. It is the most valuable thing, okay, that will help you with your business is your network, okay? Yeah, Russ? Okay, five minutes, okay. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, you need to be willing to risk some time and money, okay? If you're not willing to do that, you're probably better, you're probably better think of something else, okay? Um, watch that video. Um, so in closing, if I were you now looking back 30 some odd years, if I were sitting in your seat now and knowing what I know now, what would I do? I've come up with four things, four ideas for in general that most people can do with or without an education that you can start looking into. Number one is I'd start learning to invest money right now. How many have a whole, how many here has lots and lots of money to invest? Hmm. Weird. Okay. Um, college. Yeah. No kidding. But guess what? Even now, you can learn to win. You can go online now, sign up for an account on different trade accounts and use what they call um, play money or fake money, where they give you an account, they load it with fake money, right? And you can do $1,000, $10,000, and you can literally start trading with that fake money, okay? And you can see, oh, how I would do. There's things like that now. They didn't have that when I was your age, okay? And then when you learn some things, start investing. Do you know if you invest $1,000 right now at your age, when you're 65, you'll have over a million dollars on just average interest if you invest 1000 If I invest $1,000 right now, when I'm 65, I'll have like 4000 If you start now, oh my goodness, it's huge. Compound interest. Learn that. Real estate. That's another one. Okay. I know more people have made money and become wealthy over real estate than probably any other industry. Okay. And again, these are just ideas. Hey, what would you do? I would look into these things. I'd start investing. I'll look into real estate. I'd start looking into digital marketing, all right? Um, affiliate marketing or influencer marketing, some kind of online marketing thing. Because again, Mark, every business needs marketing. And the last one I would really look into is I'd learn uh, if, if that stuff isn't for you, um, uh, trades, the trade industry right now, especially niche markets are critical. Here's a stat I heard the other day. Old people like me, we're called, we're Gen X or baby boomers, right? What are you guys? You know, Gen Zs, right? Okay. Right now, right now, today, there are for every, um, for every three trade tradesmen, like, and that's plumbers, electricians, you know, um, HVAC guys, welders, carpet cleaners, people like that for Every three people that retire in those trades, how many do you think are coming in 
to replace them right now. One. One. You mark my words, in the next decade, you're going to see plumbers, electricians making a quarter million dollars because nobody's going to be able to replace them. So if you're kind of a blue collar like me, hands on, want to, want to be out, you don't want to necessarily be in the desk, consider the trades. Okay? It's, it's phenomenal. So again, in closing, I just want to let you know that, um, you know, that if you have desire to, to go out there, there's things you can start doing right now. Start taking some action. Start doing something now to learn, to build your network, to educate your mind. Okay? Save up a little bit of money. Okay, if we're going buying the big fancy cars and trucks and things like that, invest it while you're young and it'll pay off big. Okay. Um, anyway, that's uh, that's what I have. Uh, we got just a couple minutes left. If there's any questions, we'd like to just open up for questions. Yeah. Um, we talked about books that you like. Any specific books that you recommend to start reading? You know, if you've never read them, I really like to start with just the basics. Okay. Um, Think and Grow Rich is probably the top of my list. Um, just because it, it helps with mindset. Um, another really good one, these are old books, but they are, they are timeless. If you don't have people skills, you're in trouble. So how to win friends and influence people. Again, these have been around for ages and you've probably heard of them, but if you haven't read them, start. And then there's, I mean, oh my goodness, there's Atomic Habits, there's The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss, there is The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, there's, uh, but I mean, once you start, You'll start, you'll start looking, but those kinds, of, those ones is what I would start with. Anybody else? Yes, sir. So uh, I know that uh, in this case, there is a lot of fears, and you said that in your early years, you lost your money, house, guys, uh, and how did you overcome that, and how were you motivated to start again? How was I able to start again? One, I had a, a phenomenal wife that supported me. <laughs> um, that was probably the biggest thing is that I, we never fought about money. And two, um, I didn't really, I, I it didn't really, I didn't really worry about it. I just like, that's where I'm at. I accepted it and just got back to work really. Um, so I, I don't know. You just, when you're in that position, you don't have a choice. You just, you have to move forward. So I think that's it. Thank you. Um, hope you've been useful for you. It's nice to meet you.